Hi guys, my name is Tara Rogers and this is my video about piston rings. I'm going to be going over several different topics, first being location, then application, purpose, operation, some failures, some diagnostics, some testing procedures, and finally some tips on overhauling. First we'll talk about the location. Piston rings are located in piston ring grooves which are found at the top of a piston. Pistons are found in designated cylinders which help make up an engine. Next I'm going to talk about application. Piston rings are found on pistons of all engines, anywhere from small motorcycle engines, gasoline engines, and large diesel engines. The size of the piston ring depends on the size of the engine. Here we have the comparison of gasoline engines piston rings on the left to a larger diesel engine's piston rings on the right. Piston rings are grouped in three different categories, number one being the top compression ring, number two being the second compression ring, also known as the wiper ring, and number three being a single ring or a group of rings that make up the oil control ring. Within the three categories, each have different styles of rings depending on the engine design and cylinder material. In this chart, you can tell the top compression ring has four different styles, the second compression ring has three different styles, and the oil control ring has four different styles as well. The picture from earlier is an example of the three-piece flex vent oil control ring. Here's a couple of examples of rings I found laying around the shop. This first one is a torsional style top compression ring found out of a gasoline engine. This one is a half keystone style top compression ring which is found on a diesel. And this one is a reverse torsional taper face style compression ring which was also found on a diesel. Next is the purpose of the piston rings. Each ring has a main function but all together they serve several purposes. First being to seal the combustion chamber which is located above the piston. Second is to provide lubrication to the cylinder wall. Third is to help manage the consumption of oil, which is found in the crankcase located underneath the piston. And finally, to help transfer heat from the combustion chamber to the cylinder wall and engine block. Next, I'm going to show you the operation of the piston rings. Here I have my simple drawing of a piston inside the cylinder. This is going to help me demonstrate the function of the three piston rings that are shown right here. So first, the top compression ring is what seals the combustion chamber during the combustion process. It does this by having the pressurized gases travel down and behind the piston ring, pushing the piston ring out to the cylinder wall. This action is what seals off the combustion chamber on top of the piston. Next, the second compression ring, also known as the wiper ring, has two functions. First, it's used as a backup compression ring for when some of the pressurized gases squeeze past the first compression ring. Its second function is to wipe the cylinder wall away of any oil splashed up from the crankcase. This is where it gets the name wiper ring. Although not shown in my drawing, most wiper rings are tapered to aid in the function of wiping the cylinder wall. Last is the third piston ring, which is the oil control ring. This ring's function is also to wipe the excess oil off the cylinder wall just like the wiper ring. What's special about this ring though is its ability to flow the oil through the holes or the slots in the ring, then through the holes in the ring groove and on the piston. This helps the oil drain back down into the crankcase, which is where the oil reservoir is located. During this process, it also helps lubricate the piston pin, which is shown here in my drawing. Now I'm going to talk about some piston ring failures. First major piston ring failure is excessive blow-by. Blow-by is air from the combustion chamber which made its way past all three piston rings and down into the crankcase. Next I will show you blow-by with another simple drawing. This drawing is showing one piston in both the exhaust stroke where the piston is moving upwards and in the intake stroke when the piston is moving downwards. During the exhaust stroke, as the piston moves upwards, if we look at the piston rings, they are actually moving downwards. This causes the pressurized gases from the combustion chamber to come down and get behind the piston rings. Then, when we move to the intake stroke and we look at the piston rings, as the piston is moving downwards, the piston rings move upwards. Then, that trapped pressurized gas will make its way down to the next piston ring. As this process is repeated and repeated, these trapped gases will eventually make their way down into the crankcase. This is considered blow-by. Small amounts of blow-by are normal for all engines. Excessive amounts of blow-by, though, are considered failures and will result in loss of power. Another failure is when carbon deposits, which are formed from blow-by, oil, and heat, build up either on top of the piston, along the cylinder wall, or in the ring grooves. 
This will cause the rings to wear, stick, or even break. The last failure I'll mention is when there is too little piston to cylinder wall clearance. This clearance is a crucial factor in the smooth operation of an engine. Piston to cylinder wall clearance is in jeopardy when the engine starts to overheat. The pistons will begin to expand and start scoring the cylinder wall and the pistons themselves. Now I'll talk about diagnosing failed piston rings. Some symptoms of failed piston rings would be a loss of power, rough idle, misfires, burning oil, and then oil consumption. Now I'm going to tell you a couple of quick ways to check for failed piston rings. One of the easiest tests is to check exhaust smoke for a bluish color. Blue colored exhaust is a result from burning oil in the combustion chamber, which can happen as a result from piston rings failing. Another quick test is to locate and inspect the positive crankcase ventilation valve, or the PCV valve. It's normally located on the valve cover. Remove from the valve cover and check for a strong, smoky presence. This can mean that combustion chamber gases are escaping into the crankcase, which is another result of failed rings. This next test is a cylinder compression test, where you hook up a compression gauge in the spark plug hole, and you measure compression on each cylinder, ensuring that they are all around the same pressure. A cylinder lacking in compression could be a sign of a failed piston ring. Finally, the last thing you could do is actually tear down the engine and visually inspect the cylinder, pistons, and piston rings yourself for failures. These next few videos are tips and procedures to follow if having to overhaul an engine and replace piston rings. When installing piston rings on an engine, you want to check for proper ring end gap. How to do that is you'll take the piston ring and place it into the cylinder, first like this, and then flatten the, in the cylinder. Take the piston itself and push it squarely on the ring and push it down to where it fits tightly. Then you'll take a feeler gauge and you'll actually measure the ring gap now in the cylinder. So with this measurement right here, it fits, and this is seven thousandths. So what you'll do is you'll take this measurement and make sure that it's in spec with the engine manufacturer. In the case of if your piston ring end gap is too small, you could actually take the piston ring, and in order to make the gap bigger, you can take a file and actually file down the piston ring in order to make the gap bigger and within the engine manufacturer's specs. Okay, next we're going to check for piston ring side clearance. To do that, you can either have already installed the piston ring on the piston, or you can do it beforehand. Uh, to do it beforehand, you just slide it into its proper pist piston ring groove. And then, again, you'll take a feeler gauge, and this measurement will be very small, anywhere from one to three thousandths. Um, so right here I have one and a half thousandths. So what you do is you take the feeler gauge, and you're going to slide it in between the piston ring and the actual piston groove and just make sure it's going to be a very tight clearance and then just to make sure it's the proper amount but again you'll want to check this spec with your engine manufacturer's specifications to make sure it's right. When installing piston rings on the piston first you want to check for any type of indicators on the ring itself to show which groove it might go in and also which side faces up so with this ring as you can see, there's a small dot to indicate that this side will face up on top of the piston. Another example is a different piston ring on a different piston where it actually has the word second. And this will indicate that it goes in the second ring groove and it, this side will face up. So next we're going to show how you can install piston rings on the piston. One way is you can um, install it manually. Um, just with your hands, but another way is a safer way to avoid any type of damage to the ring is you'll actually use this piston ring installation tool. Okay, so to use this tool, you'll take the ring and you'll push the gap right here on this part of the tool and you'll make it flush with the sides. Then you'll take the handle and start to squeeze, which it'll catch the two gaps on these two ledges. And as you squeeze, it'll open up the ring. So with the ring being open, you'll place it on top of the piston and open it far enough so that the ring goes all the way around and you'll bring it down to its proper ring groove and you'll slowly let go of the tool and the ring will start to compress and then you have your ring in your proper ring groove. 
Once all three piston rings are installed on your piston, what you want to make sure before you in install the piston into the block is make sure that each of the ring gaps of your rings are staggered in different places from each other. So right now they're all lined up, but what you want to make sure you do is make sure they're all in different locations. You want to do this, one, for proper lubrication, and two, it also helps prevent the combustion gases from sneaking down into the crankcase, and also it helps prevent the oil from squeezing its way up into the combustion chamber. I hope you guys found this video informational, and thank you for watching.